According to Rick Legina, life's a treasure hunt. We're all on one, in our own different way, and we happen to be on a real one right now. Rick's goal is apparent by now. He needs to find the treasure buried at Oak Island. It might sound crazy, but it gives him purpose and a reason to smile when he wakes up every morning. Rick also believes, despite more confusion being added than clarity, that every day it feels like we're turning a page of a really good book. I still believe. We hope Rick never stops believing. He deserves a happy ending after dreaming about the island for so long. The Legioners have made more progress in solving the mystery of Oak Island than any explorers before them. Charles Barkhouse, a historian on the island, said part of their success could be attributed to an asset others didn't have. Barkhouse said, they something that other searchers didn't have, a willingness to listen. Barkhouse believes that previous explorers wanted full control over their expeditions, which made it impossible to make real progress. The Legioners bring in various experts and listen to every possible solution before picking the one they believe will work best. The Curse of the Island says that seven people have to die before the treasure is revealed. So far, six people have lost their lives searching for the treasure. Will Rick be the seventh? Black House says, putting one's life at risk to find something that may or may not be buried is extreme. Another explorer, Daniel Blankenship, came to the island from Florida 50 years ago and hasn't left since. He, like the Legioners brothers, has put his life on hold while he waits for the secrets of the island to be revealed. The treasure could be anything, and, that's what excites people, says Barkhouse. The curse of the island says that seven people have to die before the treasure is revealed. So far, six people have lost their lives searching for the treasure. Will Rick be the seventh? Black House says, putting one's life at risk to find something that may or may not be buried is extreme. Another explorer, Daniel Blankenship, came to the island from Florida 50 years ago and hasn't left since. He, like the Legioners brothers, has put his life on hold while he waits for the secrets of the island to be revealed. The treasure could be anything, and, that's what excites people, says Barkhouse. A group of volunteer archaeologists journeyed to the British holy island of Lindisfarne. There, they hoped to learn more about the early Christian roots tied to the isle. They never expected to dig up a relic related to something else altogether. Made of white and blue glass, what the group of researchers dug up was no larger than a piece of candy. Now, they just had to figure out what the artifact was. The relic they dug up with made entirely of glass. The piece was a swirl of white and blue, with white glass jutting out at the top. It almost resembled a crown. The glass object was old, dating back to the 8th or 9th century. If that was the case, then the archaeologists had to believe it was from the time of the Vikings, when they first landed on the English island. Their landing is considered to be a significant historical event. For reference, the British Isle of Lindisfarne was once home to a monastery. But, in 793 and a Domini, the site was invaded by Vikings. This would be the first in many attacks that would ultimately change the region forever. Because of this, any relics or artifacts found from this period are a huge cause for excitement. Now, it was just a matter of the archaeologists figuring out just what the item was. Aidan and few of his fellow monks successfully established a monastery of the British Isle of Lindisfarne. And, ultimately, it proved to be very useful for a very specific reason. Because of the island's close proximity to the mainland of Northumbria, specifically the region of Bernicia, the monastery prospered with trade. Ironically, historians don't consider Aidan to be the most significant monk to frequent the holy island of Lindisfarne. That title goes to someone else. A monk called Cuthbert made his way to the island of Lindisfarne during the latter half of the 7th century, entering into the monastery established by Aidan. During his time on the island, Cuthbert started to change the ways of the monks. 
Because of his reform, many believe Cuthbert to be the most significant and important monk ever to grace Lindisfarne. In later history, he was even made an esteemed saint. During the summer of 783, Vikings landed on Lindisfarne. This was the first attack on a Western European territory. And, according to historians, it was a good first assault location because it was so well known by the general public of Western Europe. But the attack would change the course of Lindisfarne's history. And, unfortunately, most of the structures were lost in time. Insert the team at Die Ventures, who discovered the piece of glass in 2019. Die Ventures is a non-profit organization funded totally on donations from the public. Their goal is to organize archaeological excavation experiences. And the team has found numerous artifacts of the island, including pins, graves, jewelry, sculptures, and even ruins of buildings. But it was in 2019 that they discovered something else entirely. One of the women on site found a piece of decorative glass in the ground. Now, it was a matter of figuring out what it was. Unfortunately, no one is entirely sure where the game originated. It could have come from the Nordic regions, or the Vikings could have adopted the game after one of their many invasions. So, for the people of Die Ventures, the glass game piece was a huge find. Although they realized it might not have actually belonged to a Viking, it might have instead been the property of an affluent monk who lived on the island at the time. This would be extraordinary because it would show part of the Nordic culture in Britain before the Vikings ever invaded Lindisfarne. If that was the case, it would give the researchers a glance into pre-Viking Lindisfarne. But, there is one thing historians have concluded. The pieces used for the game are quite spectacular, as seen by the glass piece found at Lindisfarne. So, it's safe to assume they were used for something other than a board game. Since the pieces were so elaborate, some believe they were involved in Viking boat burials. It's possible the Vikings believed the game played an important role in the afterlife, or that the pieces would just be useful to them. But the pieces also showed a person's social standing. The more elaborate the game pieces, the more appealing, and perhaps wealthy, the owner of the game board looked to other people. 